This is Bazaar Morning Call. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios in Mumbai. Good morning, you're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. It's a Monday morning, the day after Diwali. But I just want to start once again by wishing the all of you, uh, whoever is watching us this morning, a very happy Diwali and of course a very auspicious, prosperous summer 2080 as well. I'm Prashant, uh, with me my colleagues Nigel and Mangalam. Morning guys. Good morning. You morning. Know, um, uh, you said whoever is watching. I'm sure a lot of people in the north, uh, the northern part of the country, not watching because what they do is they do the puja at four in the morning yeah. of Diwali. So probably immediately post puja, they would have gone to sleep. Uh, as a result of which, uh, you know, earlier we would have the markets closed the next day. Yeah. Today the markets are open. open. The day after uh, is a holiday, a bit, which is tomorrow. It's a bit odd, but it is what it is. So yeah, you we try get to get a cap tomorrow. this morning. You'll get a perfect understanding. <laughs> no cabs on the road. You know, I come from, I take a cab from the most busiest junction in Bandra. That's Mehbub Studio. I was in a single cab either there or even at Leelawati. So that's telling you. I took one this up. morning <laughs> and uh, the person stopped midway because they didn't have enough gas and they said, okay, enough. You all have to find another one. So yes, the city <laughs> but, is on uh, leave. But I'm, we, glad, <laughs> I'm glad both of you are here. I mean, we made it. We need <laughs> so, to have enough gas to pull yes, through the day. And we then will. We, and then we're back into the pavilion for tomorrow. So that's the good news, uh, One day break, right? Which is uh, great it. news. Well, you know, let's just uh, begin by telling our viewers what they need to know yeah. as we uh, kickstart another uh, sort of trading session, another week actually. Uh, so, you know, I'll just start, basically rewind the clock and take you back to Friday and then I'll kind of address what happened yesterday because, I mean, we did react to Friday's session, uh, but for those of you who are joining us and looking at, I mean, all of the action uh, uh, fresh, uh, you know, we had a very powerful move. NASDAQ went up 2% on Friday and I would say, and venture to say, that it did not appear to have many fundamental underpinnings. NASDAQ's 2% move, the S&P was up about 1.6%. It was a broad-based move. Uh, so, if it is not fundamentals, it's not data, it's not big earnings or anything of that sort, what seems to have played a role is, uh, you know, things like uh, technicals, right, uh, sentiment, uh, things like seasonality, which is the fact that the fourth quarter traditionally is very strong for global equities. So, it's a mix of these things and some of these things can be self-fulfilling prophecies. If you believe that, you know, the end of the year you're going to get a rally and everybody kind of believes it, you know, uh, that's the definition of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Will we get it is the question because in the U.S. as well, there is a huge dispersion. Uh, the Russell actually is down for the year. The Nasdaq is up 25-30% uh, as we kind of uh, get into the fag end of the uh, year. Now, global markets are waking up and kind of some of them uh, are uh, waking up to uh, the big news, which was Friday's uh, news, which is uh, Moody's U.S. outlook downgrade from stable to negative. We'll talk more about this. This is, of course, at the incremental, at the margin, a bit of a negative. And uh, more than anything else, it kind of once again uh, shines a spotlight on what is basically eventually ultimately going to be the unsustainable path for U.S. debt. I mean, the printing which is going on in the U.S. at a very, very unsustainable rate uh, is nothing now, but it's one more item which I think uh, builds up. Uh, so just a few other things which I think you need to watch out for. So we get the big data point this week out of the U.S., which is the CPI. Markets are very sanguine. Uh, despite mm -hmm. Powell saying that, you know, we'll have to be cautious on inflation, etc. The, the playbook is still post-FOMC and the FOMC was, uh, you know, dovish and the comments, commentary was dovish and markets have made up their minds that we are done. The hiking, big hiking, 500 basis point hiking cycle is done, maybe higher for longer, but eventually the next move is not a hike but a cut. So CPI uh, on Tuesday is important. We get a meeting between uh, the top two leaders, I mean, you know, President Biden and Pre President Xi of China and they meet on Wednesday. Uh, you know, so much of, uh, so, so much of the uh, sort of uh, talk around uh, realignment of supply chains, realignment of friendships, etc., is based on uh, the fact that the world, in a way, does not like China, right? I mean, especially in the U.S., there is aversion to invest, put more money into uh, things Chinese. Uh, will that, can that change at the margin? I think that's going to be uh, the important thing to track. There is, of course, some source-based uh, news flow around this in terms of what we can expect, but more on that. U.S. government shutdown risks... 
the deadline is on Friday. Unlikely we actually will get a shutdown, but there will be headline risk around it. Uh, so this is a few things into the week. Now to circle back to what happened yesterday. The Nifty was up half a percent in trade yesterday. We had a pretty good Mohurat session. So very, very uh, solid session. We closed at the 50% retracement of the full fall for them from the all-time high uh, to the low that we had three weeks back. That is at about 19.530. We got a close at 19.525, pretty much the 50% retracement. So that's the first level. Then you get the 61.8% retracement, which is closer to about 19,700. The precise number is 19,693, which is the next resistance for the Nifty. Bank Nifty, we've been kind of waiting for the last many sessions for the Bank Nifty to close above the 40-day exponential. We got that with yesterday's bump. So that number is 43,874. We closed at almost 44,000 levels. The next level to watch is about 200 points above which is uh, 44208 and then 44704. These are again 50 and 61.8% retracements of the full fall. Small cap uh, in this index, it continues to be in another orbit. It's been the fastest recovery. It's made a new high, it continues to make a new high. And yesterday we had a new closing high for the small cap index once again. This morning, I think the indication is that we get a bit of a flattish start and we'll pick up from there. But you already, we already have in a way reacted in a milder way to Friday's very strong U.S. market session. Guys. Well, you spoke about the flattish start and the small cap index doing well. I'll talk about uh, the cricket game that I was <coughs> watching yesterday. In the second half in particular, watched it in passing. Yeah. Once we had Virat Kohli bowling, then we had Shubman Gill bowling. We also had Surya Kumar Yadav bowl as well and Rohit Sharma to top things. What it told you was that Team India said that this was nice practice for us and business resumes on Wednesday. Okay. The same thing can be spoken about the market as well. Yesterday was a Murat session. We did extremely well. Session. Today, uh, we just chill around because a lot of other indices uh, you know, in Asia are yeah. shut as well. And then business resumes on Wednesday itself. So we watched the equity markets and the semi-finals, both of them on Wednesday. What's actually, however, happened over uh, the last f uh, month or so yeah. is that while the US risk on has resumed, we've mm. seen money chase other emerging markets as well. Up until now, India was the only game in town where a lot of yeah. money was you know, chasing the Indian shores. China has been underperforming as compared to Nifty. But look at Brazil. Brazil is up 4% in the last one month. And we have Russian index as well, up around a percent and a half. So that's one thing that we'll be talking about. You spoke about the way Nasdaq moved on Friday as well, right? In the last one month, the biggest gauge of the US markets uh, seeing, you know, a resumption of risk on is the way Bitcoin has moved. Mm. And you compare that with the way the US WIX has moved. So the US WIX is down 27%, mm. whereas the Bitcoin is up 39% itself. And ahead of CPI data tomorrow, all eyes on the US macros, and they seem pretty stable. Mm. No much, uh, not much change in terms of the US yield. The, ball, the dollar index is close to around 1.5, just around that 1.5.6 mark. Crude oil hovering around that $80 per barrel mark. And here, back home, while the small cap index has done well, a large number of stocks will now be focusing or reacting to the second quarter numbers, uh, the last leg of those earnings. Mm. And thereafter, the street will start building in positions post this festive season for state elections mm. and also begin, uh, you know, reading into those tea leaves for the general elections as well. Though there is not much correlation between the state results and general elections. Mm. This will give you some sort of sentiment check on the ground as far as the political situation is concerned. The one thing that I'll be tracking out for, what the FIA is doing in the cash market. Why? Because yes, there is strong domestic equity inflow. Mm. There is a lot of resilience from our own money. FIAs don't need to buy big. Mm. Even if they sell small, we move higher. I was just looking at some data. On November 3, the FIAs sold about 12 and a half crores. The Nifty was up 100 points. They sold about 500 crores. Every time they sell less than 500, 600 crores, mm. the Nifty moves big. Mm. And on the other side, on November 9th, the FIA sold about 1,700 odd crores. The Nifty closed mildly in the red. So they don't need to buy much. Even if they sell a little less, we'll continue our up move forward. But like I said, for markets and cricket, business resumes Wednesday. Well, what's the biggest queue this week, Prashant? Well, tomorrow's holiday, Nigel. What's the biggest queue this week? India versus New Zealand. That's, That's something it. I'll be watching out for. <laughs> we'll come back next Monday morning, I'll tell you what. We'll all be wearing our blue jerseys. Don't, don't say much. Don't say much. <laughs> you know, so quite excited about that as well. I'll try to figure out with, uh, you know, the boss whether or not I can sneak away to Vankade this week. So we'll have to see how that goes. But clearly very, very exciting times. But yeah. we need to talk about the markets, right? Most so let's definitely. talk about that. <laughs> Today I'll be interested to see how domestic participation is. Because yeah. you know, a lot of people will be on leave, extended weekend as well. And the festivities continue. So that's one factor at play. Next up, you have uh, the Nifty Financial Services Index that normally has its expiry on Tuesday. But Tuesday was shut. Yippee. 
So we'll keep an eye out today because that today the expiry does play out for the Nifty Financial Services Index. And you can count on the bulls, right? They made such good use of yesterday's Moura trading session, took the Nifty up, crossed that 19,500-odd mark on a closing basis. Last week, a couple of times, you ended on 19,470, 19,480, and we pulled back from there. But yesterday, they made good use of that, hit a century in style, and we conquered that. Now, all eyes are on whether or not we can go to that 19,590. Importantly, you know, the mid-cap and the small-cap uh, index out there, the mood for various stocks is very, very good. So I think that party could continue even in today's trading session. How the FI is positioned? Well, 82% of their positions are on the short side. Uh, you have close on 18% on the long side. You'd like a net short market. And as we have been saying, and as I said at the start of the series as well, with the FI's net short, it hasn't been such a bad thing. And maybe it'll be a good thing yet again. So that's one factor at play. Two strikes I'm looking at. 19,400 put and 19,500 call. The 19,500 call, the premium was in that vicinity of around 80 to 90 rupees. Or it appears there was writing out there. Will those call writers run for cover? So that's one factor you need to track. On the downside, the 19,400 put, well, big open interest built up out there. Total open interest around 85 lakh shares out there. And the premium around 40 rupees, which brings us to the levels. Or support zone, near term, you know, for today itself, 19,365 because of the writing at 19,400. And on the upside, because you saw mixed activity added on the 19,500 call, that 19,590, that becomes a bit of a resistance. On the Nifty Financial Services Index, well, you saw the 19,600 put out there. It saw a fair bit of open interest build up. The premium out there was around 30 to 40 rupees. So given that sort of a, you know, that, that sort of built up that we saw, 19,560 becomes important around the Nifty Financial Services Index. And the highest open interest is added around 19,800. So that's a bit of a resistance zone. I'm highlighting these numbers because that index plays the expiry today. And it has a bit of an overlap at times with the Nifty Bank. So when that moves, you sometimes see the Nifty Bank as well participate, which is obviously a large weight out there. The trend seems to be up. The 19,250, that's uh, the level that was a resistance. Till we hold above that, you'll be betting on the Nifty going ahead and conquering that 20,000 market again. Well, line of sight to the uh, 20,000 level yeah. as uh, yes. we discussed yesterday. So it looks like it. Let's see uh, the stars align and come together. Well, let's just get you some views as well. This is on equities rhythm. This eye of Morgan Stanley says that with strong earnings, macro stability and domestic flows, it is hard to argue against India's investment case. That said, he adds, uh, event-heavy calendar with potential binary outcomes sets the markets up volatility after having been less volatile than ever. He says they're overweight financials, consumer discretionary, industrials and technology, and they're underweight on other sectors. He adds, while we are in a macro market in contrast to a stock pickers market, the macro trade could peak in 2024. All right, time now to get you some money market views as well. It'll be interesting to see if there are a lot of uh, volumes in the money markets as well. A lot of bank branches are shut even though Banks are trading or banks are open in the country. B. Prasanna of ICICI Bank says that the dollar rose after hawkish Fed's peak last week, but mixed signals coming in from the economic data managed to keep it in a tight range. He also adds that while crude corrected on demand supply outlook and Asian currencies have recovered from lows, the rupee has underperformed due to FII outflows and oil companies' purchases as well. He expects the short-term pressure on the rupee to continue and expect the currency to trade in a range of 83.15 to 83.65 with the RBI smoothing the volatility. Well, on bonds, we've got B. Prasanna who says the global yields retraced higher and are consolidating amidst mixed data print and hawkish rhetoric from Fed officials. He says crude prices continued softening amidst weak demand outlook and receding more premium back home he goes, to, goes on to say, bonds continue to rally with receding fears of OM, OMO sales uh, in the near future as liquidity remained in deficit. He expects bonds to trade in a narrow range with a 10-year between 7.26 to 7.35%. Well, we've got plenty of stocks to track for you. There were a lot of numbers uh, over the weekend, but we have uh, you know, brought it down to around 10 top stocks that we're looking at. Coal India, Aicha Motors, Fortis Health and Sun TV. Four of them are reacting to positive news flow. But on the flip side, you have ONGC, Biocon, Sale, Tata Chemicals, Glenmark Pharma and LIC. They are stocks that you should be keeping on your radar and could be on the negative side.